I'm Brendan Wallace. I'm the founder and CEO of Identify.com. And Identify.com is a Silicon Valley based startup. And it's growing very quickly right now using Facebook and the Facebook Connect platform, which is fairly new. And so why am I here as a Silicon Valley based startup? Fadi Gendor, one of the conference's hosts, is also one of our investors. And what he asked me to do is come talk about how our business used Facebook and the Facebook Connect platform to scale market and just disseminate the message about identified to grow very quickly. So what I thought I'd do is not to, not to bore you with too much information about identified, I'd just kind of talk about how using Facebook Connect changed our business very radically as we kind of discovered it. Talk a little bit about what Facebook Connect is and what it can do for websites that you may have or businesses you may want to disseminate on the internet. And then, because we've become kind of, I guess, experts on Facebook Connect, answer any questions you have about Facebook data or how to use Facebook Connect or what information, privacy, everything that people kind of are concerned about right now. So, uh, actually, so what is Identified? Identified uh, was a business that was created by myself and a, my co-founder, who were classmates in our first year of business school at the Stanford Business School, and we. My co-founder is the founder of a site called 20.com, which is the second largest social network in Europe, actually right behind Facebook. It was a copycat site of Facebook, just put Facebook in Spanish, it grew to 15 million users, and he sold it for 100 million uh, euros. So did pretty well by copying Facebook. He came to business school with me. I met him, my background was more kind of traditional finance. So I graduated Princeton, went to work in banking at Goldman Sachs, went to work at Blackstone, and I met Adi Emi in my first year of business school, and I had had some experience, obviously, recruiting, seeing it on the company side, seeing it as an applicant. And the idea we had was recruiting is a very painful, archaic process. It hasn't really evolved, and there's nothing the internet has really done to make the process of recruiting that much easier for companies or for users. And when you talk to users, applicants, and companies, they're not really satisfied with the tools they have. I mean, job boards are basically classifieds online. And the only difference between how you would have applied to a company, say, 50 years ago versus today is that 50 years ago you would have mailed your resume in, today you email it in. Nothing in the mechanics or the process has actually changed. So the idea was very simple. Why don't we create a platform where we give users one identity, and that identity is their resume, give companies one identity, and let them interact and find each other with very simple search criteria to filter and find each other. So as a student, I could say, show me every company that is in San Francisco and is an advertising firm and has more than 50 employees. And all the companies that meet those criteria pop up. And as a user, I, or as a company, I could say, show me every student out of Stanford who's an engineering major and has this GPA and is a female. And all the students that meet those criteria pop up and you can recruit them. So that was our idea. We went out, we raised a little bit of money my first year, hired a couple engineers, built the product, got really excited about it. And as you build a product, you start adding lots of features to it. We built forums on it, we built statistics, we allowed people to connect with each other, and we were really, really excited for our launch. This was actually last January that we launched this. And it's kind of the, it was like a Monday morning, we turned on the site, we thought it was gonna explode. You know, we thought this was gonna be Facebook all over again. And we turned it on, and it was like one of those scenes in a movie where someone tells a really bad punchline, and there's just like crickets chirping. We signed up like 10 users in two weeks. It was a total disaster. So uh, we stepped back, we're like, okay, what's, what did we miss? What, what was wrong about the site? Because I don't think the concept is that bad. And we started looking at, okay, how do we get companies? So we're just calling, we're cold calling companies. It wasn't that, there was no kind of rocket science to it. How do we get users? We're like, oh, Facebook, college kids. There's tons of Facebook, you know, it's kind of tons of college kids on Facebook. I think the, the average college kid, and it's kind of sad, scary, but true, spends 90 minutes a day active on Facebook. They've got all their friends there, they've been on there for four years. It's a very powerful tool to be able to access them. And when we looked at Facebook, we realized that actually embedded in Facebook, in all the profiles that users have in Facebook, there's all this information that you could use to make the recruiting experience more relevant, such as where they went to school, what companies their friends are connected to, where they're located. And so we built as a tool to pull out that information from Facebook. But the concerns a lot of students have is, hey, I don't want to use Facebook to recruit because I've got pictures on there, I've got posts, I've got information I don't want mixing with my professional identity. So we built this kind of a natural barrier that pulled that in. And as we started playing around with what you could do by adding social on top of recruiting, it got really interesting. We could add information about, you know, 
which of your peers are recruiting to a particular company, which of your friends are going to this information, this information session, what alumni from your school work at a particular company, what's the most active company in recruiting people like you. All that information kind of existed at the kind of the epicenter of the, your social graph, like what you do on Facebook and what the career center traditionally does, and we just kind of merge them. So that was really the only change we made to the product, and we relaunched, identified about three months later, and we had all these kind of social features in there, and it exploded. Uh, it went in two weeks from zero students, basically at Stanford, to having 80% of the school. We had twice as many kids unidentified recruiting to jobs as the Career Center had on it. We were placing kids in jobs in like the first 48 hours of the site being live. In fact, the Career Center at Stanford was so mad at us, they wanted to shut down the site while we were still in school, and they did. Ironically, that actually attracted all the right investors. So Eric Schmidt, Fadi, and a number of investors all then invested in us because they realized how much Career Centers hated us, which was a good thing. But what I think is interesting about the identified story is that there was no real innovation that happened between the two launches other than adding social. It was really the only change. We took a product that was, the, the architecture of what identified was didn't change at all. We just stuck that social in your friend connections and your graph on top of it to make that experience more interesting. So I don't know how much people are familiar with Facebook Connect. I know everyone's familiar with Facebook. What I thought I'd do is just walk through what the mechanics of Facebook Connect are, what it lets you do, what the, how the information flows, and how it could be relevant for sites you're thinking of starting or sites you already have where you're asking users to create profiles. So what is Facebook Connect? Facebook Connect is basically the next evolution of, of the Facebook platform. And what it does is it allows all the websites all across the internet to access the database in Facebook and all the social information that users have disclosed about themselves to make the experience on their site more interesting. So it can pull in who you know, what you say about yourself, what you like, what you don't like, to make that experience on that site more interesting. And what's really powerful about that is that when you use Facebook Connect, you connect once. So on a website that has Facebook Connect, Facebook is always running in the background. You add a friend on Facebook, you add a friend on that website. It's a consistent relationship between the two. And it's fairly new, it's only kind of a year old. So just to kind of break down what that means for websites. Identity. You think about most websites that ask users to create profiles. How annoying is it when you sign up for a website and it asks you to input your name, your address, your birthday, your, your gender, your, create a password, create a username that you're going to forget all over again. Facebook Connect get, gets rid of all that. So you use your Facebook login, you connect and all that information lives on Facebook you can pull it into the, to the website you're using and pre-populate all that information. So it's a very simple way to pull in the identities of users. Friends, it pulls in all of your friends. So it lets you access all the friend networks, or all, all the, the networks you're connected to and all the friends you have already on Facebook. Discovery, I, I, don't, I don't really like that word discovery. It's basically growth and marketing because the same time you create a flow of information from Facebook to your website, you also create a t another flow of information from your website to Facebook, which allows you to push information to wall feeds, to news feeds, to friends wall feeds, that actually lets you scale, disseminate, market, and brand your website basically for free by creating the right incentives for users to do that. And then privacy. Privacy is a concern that pretty much every website out there is dealing with that has user profiles. Facebook has kind of made that a problem for everyone, but Facebook is now taking steps to solve that by instructing their users to invest a lot of time in controlling their privacy, controlling what certain users and what companies and what sites can see about you. And the nice thing about using Facebook Connect is that when you use Facebook Connect, you have access to all those privacy settings and you can tell users that they have the benefit of all those privacy settings as well. The last thing is reliability. You're not using like a MySpace or something, you're using Facebook. It's now become a very trusted website I think there's over 25,000 websites now that are using Facebook Connect in some form. So authentication, just to kind of break down in a little more detail what these means. Authentication is pretty basic. It means when you, normally when you signed up for a website, it would send an email verification for you. You had to go back and forth and verify that you're actually a real person. Now you don't need to do that anymore. You have one ID on Facebook, and you access that to create the profile on whatever the site it is that you're using Facebook Connect for. Real identities. Now, most profiles that are created on sites other than Facebook have a bunch of problems. It's either 
incomplete information, inaccurate information. There's very weak incentives to update the information so it's not really current. All that's corrected with Facebook. Most users have one identity on Facebook. That identity is typically real and it's current because they're on there basically every day. So when you access that information, you can pull in the real identity of users and you don't have to worry about fake or misleading or inaccurate information floating around in user profiles. You can actually control that information. Friends. So this is what I think is obviously the most important aspect of, of, of Facebook Connect is on Identify, this was really the only real innovation we had was pulling in friends and letting you see a job search and see career information and see companies in the context of your social graph. And there's lots of sites that are doing this in different verticals, whether it's music or whether it's shopping or whether it's dating or whether it's, you know, any media even that lets you kind of like view your, view the content of that site in the context of your friends. If your friends tend to like something, if your friends tend to look at something, it makes the experience of, of, of how you, how you, um, how you consume that site, I think, more interesting, more engaging, and in a lot of cases, just more fun. Um, privacy, as I was saying, privacy, I think, is a, it's a, is a real concern for a lot of websites. And with, with Facebook Connect, you have the benefit of all of Fa Facebook's privacy settings that they've invested a lot of time in. And then social distribution. This is basically an efficient way to scale and market your business. Because if you create the right incentives for users to push information back to their wall feeds, you allow information about your website to flow to their entire friend networks and their entire social graphs so that you can grow your site basically for free. And lots of sites have created really cool game mechanics to allow you to do this, to incent you, whether it's a, whether it's a game like Farmville or whether it's a whether it's a music site, to push information back to your walls. If you can invest a lot of time in your site and find the right incentives, you can grow it very quickly. And at Identified, we do this with Q&A, we do this with getting introductions to companies, with referrals, and tons of users are now pushing information back to their wall feeds, and we're growing basically for free. Whereas five years ago, we would have had to pay for lots of advertising to achieve that same growth. So, that was kind of, I guess, my, my short but sweet overview of what Identified's doing and kind of what Facebook Connect is. Um, so I thought I'd just open it up to questions. I know a lot of people have questions about Facebook privacy and concerns over information, and we've looked a lot at this, so I just open it up to whoever has any questions. So F Facebook is constantly changing, and the, the way you should, this is what I know at least, the, the way you should code with Facebook, you have to, co um, to cope with this change constantly. So do you see this as a pain, or it's easy and manageable? Yeah, so the question was, I guess I caught the beginning yeah. of it. Basically, Facebook is changing their protocols about what you can do with Facebook Connect constantly. W what actually happened was, about two years ago, if you remember, there was a lot of stuff going on inside Facebook. Like there were these little games like vampires getting all over your wall that people didn't like and they found that very noisy. And so what Facebook Connect decided to do is instead of adding more information to the platform, they would keep Facebook as itself, they'd keep the integrity of the site but allow you to access more and more data. So if anything, they're actually opening up the site to let outside sites access more data but push less into Facebook itself so that it's less noisy. So you're actually seeing kind of a shift away from sites that are, that are based within the Facebook ecosystem to sites that are third-party sites being able to access even more and more information about Facebook. The nice thing about what we're doing in Identified is that whereas some sites get very intrusive and they know what you're looking at and what pages you like, we take typically self-disclosed information like where you went to school, where you work, who you're friends with. It's very, very superficial uh, information. In the back. Um, a couple of questions. I think I heard you say I once and then your friends. And so are you referring to I as in the site that is using Facebook Connect? And your friends, are they, is that referring to the user's friends? It was a bit confusing to me as to who sees what. Who sees, sorry, I don't understand the question. The in your presentation, you said at times, your friends, you bring your friends with you. Yeah. 
okay, but the friends then you're referring to the friends of the user of your of the site that's using Facebook Connect. Right? Yeah, so when a user signs in using Facebook Connect, not only are they signing in, but they're signing in all their friends with them, and tons of sites do this. So basically, you have access to the information that's disclosed about all of that user's peer circle. So if they have 500 friends, all the information about those 500 friends now flows into your site's database. So for okay. example, at Identified, we've grown in five weeks to about 8,000 users. And with those 8,000 users, we have a database of 3.8 million people because of all the friends that have been pulled in with them. And do these friends have a choice as to whether they're pulled into any site that uses Facebook Connect? They do. It's subject to the privacy controls of that user on Facebook. So which is which setting? Which is in the privacy settings of Facebook. So right, but you can disclose whether people can see information about yourself. And if you elect not to disclose that, that cannot be pulled in the third party sites. Right, but when, as a user of Facebook, it's not obvious to me that if, if I'm letting people see my info, it's, I assume it's not other companies. Yeah, it, it's, it's one of the things Facebook is struggling with because Facebook okay. wants to be your extended privacy setting for the entire internet. So they're trying to convince users of this, that hey, you should invest time in your profile, in the privacy settings to control not only what users can see about you on Facebook, but what people can see about you on third party sites that may be using Facebook Connect like ours. These people have been pulled in by their friends. Now you have basic information on who they are. Do you contact them, or what do you do with that information? Or you just use it, um, uh, with their education and so on, uh, for matching with um, empl employers? So what we can do is, since we know most people actually say what firm they work for, what company they work for, if lots of people say they work at Microsoft, and I'm a student and I'm looking at Microsoft, I can tell that student, hey, you know these five people directly at Microsoft, and you know these 50 people through friend of friends at Microsoft, even if those people are not unidentified. So it basically lets the student visualize their, their social network and how they're connected to people at companies in, in one profile. So we're basically taking that data and delivering it to students to help them recruit in our case. Okay, well, what are, uh, you said here, feeds, invites. What are some of the, I mean, uh, at the heart of it, People, you get one guy to visit your site, and then he recommends through Facebook, through feeds and invites, his his other friends to join. Yeah. What, what are what exactly do they do? They just click on like. Can you tell us a little bit exactly how they transfer or how do they refer you to their friends? Uh, so in one case, what we can do is let's say you're looking at that example, Microsoft as a company, and you want to get a job at Microsoft, and I can see a colleague of mine from school who works at Microsoft, and he's not unidentified. We can actually show you that and say, hey, Brendan, you're applying to Microsoft. Would you like to get a referral from your friend? Because we know, because we've pulled in your social graph, that he works at, fa at Microsoft. And so we can, we can make that connection for you, and we can send an invite to that, that other user saying, sign in and refer your friend into Microsoft. So that would be one example. There's lots of different ways you can do it. Uh, one more example of how you could do it. So we actually have Q&A on the site. So a student could ask a question, What's it like to work at Goldman Sachs? And we can say, hey, you know these five people at Goldman Sachs, maybe you should, 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 should suggest this question to them to answer. So if you work at Goldman Sachs, and I can see that, I can suggest that question to you on Facebook, and it'll flow to your wall feed if the, if the user wants to do that. Brendan thinks this is an interesting question for you because you work at Goldman Sachs. And, and as you kind of play around with the invite system, there's all sorts of things you can do by knowing who that user knows and matching that with the information on the site. Paid membership websites. With yes, yeah, totally. <coughs> well, what's that? Are there any disadvantages to this? I mean, how can you manage the, the, the non-paid users? Um, I mean, I, I don't think there's any difference. It's kind of that's what you do with paying versus non-paying is is totally kind of local to your site. So for example, Spotify does this, which is a music site that does a very robust Facebook integration, and they have paying and non-paying users. So you can kind of control it however you want, but the social information is yours for both paying and non-paying users. 
you mentioned something about the the websites that have access to Facebook Connect actually pushing something to the walls of the of the different users and and possibly their friends. Can you just elaborate? I mean, can is this advertising? Is this something else? Or what is this exactly that's being pushed to the walls? Well, obviously, you have to ask the user. So the question was, if we can push information back into Facebook, what can you do, and how is that controlled? So. Obviously, you want to make sure that users are content with what they're putting on their walls, because if you, if you do it against their will, most users are going to probably sign out of your site. So some sites that were very early on in Facebook Connect would immediately post things to their wall that so-and-so signed into a website, but users really didn't like that. So most sites now do not do that anymore. So what we do is we ask you to post something on your wall that we think might be relevant to you. So a question that you want an answer to, or a company that you want a referral to, or a connection that you want to demonstrate to someone, you can post that on your wall. Uh, two quick questions. Do you think Facebook is in a stage that more mature uh, people like businesses actually use this? Let's say you don't have a, a matching of graduates, you have a matching of investors with uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Do you think uh, the Facebook is in the stage that even those mature people would use it to connect with your website? And uh, question two, um, uh, Yahoo, Google, uh, even Twitter all have this sort of connect uh, feature. Uh, why do you use Facebook and not those other services? So on, on whether people, I guess your question is whether experienced, tire, whether experienced people are using Facebook as a useful networking tool. Is that? I mean, it, I think in our case, it's mainly targeting college kids. It's mainly for college students. But one interesting example of why the information on Facebook is a lot better than the information on LinkedIn is that most people on LinkedIn don't have that many connections. They don't really bother. They don't really see the benefit of having a lot of connections on LinkedIn. So when we were hiring engineers and we wanted references, we looked them up on LinkedIn to see what they said about themselves. But then we went to Facebook to see who we knew, who we had in common. So that's definitely an example of using it in the experienced hire market. Your second question, though, about you know, Google and Yahoo having connect platforms to let you pull in information, there's not very complete information about users on those sites. There's very little self-disclosed information because there's no real profiles, there's no real identities, and there's very, very few connections. So they have your Gmail address book and who you know, but it's very sloppy and complete information. Facebook has very structured, organized information for you to pull in. So it's a much better database to use. And college students are just spending so much time on it that it's just a more complete data set. Uh, Facebook, just because the number of connections. The value of the data itself. Are you talking about a small world specifically? Um, well, a small world, I mean, a lot of the users that we would bring onto our site aren't really on a small world. So if all of them were, it would be useful. But the great thing about what we're doing is we can pull in all sorts of connections, whether they're in the small world as kind of an elite social network. Facebook is much more democratic. Anyone can sign on to Facebook. So we can pull in tons of users as soon as one user signs in. So I would definitely say Facebook. Accessing the Facebook platform, I guess the, the, th the top three are unique attributes of the Facebook Connect. Yep. Which, of the, which of them would you say is very critical to your application? I'd say increased engagement was definitely the, the key for us. Um, as I was explaining with when we first launched, we had basically the exact same site, but no social layer to view it through. So you could have a forum and you could talk about jobs and careers and questions you had about recruiting. But the, all we did when we connected with Facebook is told you what your friends were talking about and what your friends were concerned about and some of their answers, and it became a lot more engaging. The students actually engaged in the website because we recommended questions that their friends were answering or asking to them. So in that case, it was definitely an engagement-based tool to get them on there. And I think it, it's like anything. When you, when you can see what your friends are doing and when you can see how they're engaging with something, it just becomes more relevant to you. So for our website, I think it's definitely the engagement-based tool. As a 
site owner, if I want to capture attributes about the users, which are not captured by uh, Facebook profile, how would I do that? So we have that exact same problem. So when you sign in to Facebook, and you, or when you sign to Identified and you connect with Facebook, uh -huh. we have very limited information about you that a company could make a decision on. We know where you went to school, maybe what your major is, where you used to work. We don't have your GPA, your SAT score, other credentials that they'd use. So we actually ask them to add that information into their profiles. Uh -huh. But it's, a, it's, it's kind of a challenge because you want to make the process to sign up as fast as possible, right. accepting that you're going to lose some information by doing that. But I think the best way to do it is to incent the users to go back in and add their GPA or add the SAT score. So what we do in our case is if a user signs in, they can sign in just with their Facebook information. But then if a company makes a search for them based on, say, GPA, okay. and they missed that search because they don't have a GPA in their profile, we notify that user saying, hey, so-and-so, a company searched for people like you, but because you don't have a complete profile, you missed that search, which is very different than how a lot of sites do it, which is they ask you to input a lot of information right away, and you don't see what the incentives or the, or the reasons or the benefit of putting that information is. We try to close that loop by showing the engagement of companies. Okay. Second question, uh, how do you make money? So how we we're not making money right now. No? It's a free service for companies, free. and it's a free service for okay. users. Um, but we ultimately want to charge companies, and I think charging companies to access the platform is one way we can do it. Uh, we are creating shadow profiles for just about every company out there. So it's kind of the Yelp model, where you create a profile for a company, you let students talk about them, you show connections at that company, and you can kind of scare a company into saying, hey, do you want to let your brand kind of be out of your control, or do you want to pay and control your brand? This is basically exactly how Yelp sold to coffee shops all across America. So that's one way I think we're, we're thinking of charging for a business. The second way is hyper-targeting, which is kind of like a Facebook ads model, but for recruiting. So right now, if you're, say, Pfizer, and you want to recruit molecular biology majors out of Penn State, and you look at Penn State and you say, show me all the female uh, molecular biology majors out of Penn State. We can, on any website, they can show you who's already applied. Let's say you've had 20 women already apply. That's great, and you can review them. But let's say you want more women to apply what a lot of companies spend tons of marketing dollars trying to do with different demographics. We can actually say, hey, we have 50 students that meet your search criteria that haven't applied to you. Would you like to put a sponsored ad on that student's profile that says, hey, dear Susie student, apply to Pfizer because we have jobs for people just like you and we'd like to target you. And if you can do that and matriculate that into a hire or, or even just an application, that's something I think we can charge for, just like Facebook ads charges to hyper-target specific demographics of users. Hi. Uh, as LinkedIn gets more social, and it is actually, do you feel that it's going to threaten your business? Not, I mean, not really. I think the average age on LinkedIn is 42 years old. So it's, it's a long shot from actually capturing college students. I think the penetration of LinkedIn in, um, in colleges is like less than 5%. So there's not actually a lot of LinkedIn usage. I think because students don't really see the benefit of having a LinkedIn profile yet. Now they do when they mature in, in, in their work experience. What we do is we basically take the social graph of a user, which we know they have. They've been on Facebook for four years. All their friends are on there. Everyone they know is on there and all the information is accurate and just deliver it to them in a professional context where they're not seeing party pictures, they're not seeing Halloween pictures, they're not seeing wall posts, they're just seeing the structured information about where someone went to school, who they know of particular companies, and how they're connected to those individuals. So yeah, I do think LinkedIn could definitely get more social, but I think it's a long way to go for LinkedIn to come into the college market. And the other thing that LinkedIn doesn't really have is LinkedIn's done a very poor job of giving identities to companies. So basically, LinkedIn is a user-to-user -user site. There's not really identities for companies on LinkedIn. What Identified is structured as is a much more transactional site. So the interaction, instead of being user to user, is user to company. And it's structured in terms of getting you a job. So there's tons of interactions between people, but it's basically like we borrow the identity from Facebook and then just connect those identities at the user's discretion to the companies they want to work for, for research about. Yeah, um, do you see career centers using your website and thereby helping with things like the GPAs and et cetera. So the interaction with career centers has been uh, really interesting. Initially when we started, 
we thought they'd love this tool because we're placing kids in jobs already and it's a recession. I think 25% of the Ivy League is graduating four years of school unemployed. So in a market like that, you think a tool like ours would be you know, embraced by a career center. They've actually really resisted us, or at least they were really resisting us. In some cases, Princeton, my alma mater, said, don't set foot on our campus. Now, we signed up 30% of Princeton in three days. So then I got another email from the Career Center saying, hey, we'd like to find a way to work with you. We'd like to be able to engage in some of the discussions on your website. We'd love to find a way to, to work with you. So I think it's a little bit of, you know, you're dealing with university administrators, so they're not always the most forward-looking people. But now that we're signing up so many students at schools, they've come back to us. And I think what we can do is allow the Career Center to focus more on educating students through a Q&A and through connecting students with alumni than simply placing them in jobs. Because that's something I can definitely do better than any career center. Because I can scale much larger than any career center. If you're, if you're Microsoft, you're not going to want to go and work with Harvard and work with Princeton and work with University of Pennsylvania and University of Florida to find the same students when you could do it through one platform. And one thing we do for career centers that are, don't always get a lot of love from com big companies is if you're University of Nebraska. It's a long way for a lot of companies to fly out to play by your career center's rules and interview your students, although they know they're missing talent there. So what we do is kind of open up that talent. So we've actually been contacted by a few state schools that have exactly this problem that are interested in getting their students unidentified. So we're trying to figure out a way to work with the career centers, but it's kind of a changing relationship because a lot of them are scared that they're going to let identified in, and then we're going to be this Trojan horse that's going to take over their, their jobs. But ideally, what we like to find is a way for them to work with us. Um, I'm just curious about the, the revenue model. Um, since it's a free service at the moment and you have investors, um, I'm just wondering about the time frame as in, as in going forward. When, when do you think that um, it will actually start making money? So I think we're probably going to start charging um, actually very soon for small features. So companies come back to us saying, hey, can we have a customized tagging system for applicants? Or, for example, the, the gender and ethnicity filter freaks out a lot of companies, and they're nervous about you know, getting into a lawsuit. So they've asked us actually to turn that off on the, on the site. It's a lot of customization, and so what we're going to do is whenever a company asks for that, say, yeah, I can turn off that filter, but it costs $1,000. Or, yeah, I can put this premium information or this PDF file up about your company, but it costs another $1,000. And ideally, what I'd like to do is structure that kind of customization into a broader monetization plan where you say, okay, it's going to cost you this to get on the site, gives you access to this information, access to these features, lets you target this many candidates, and gives you these kind of interesting analytics. Because one thing we've started to do with companies is show them how they compete versus their peer set in terms of applicants. So if you're Morgan Stanley, you want to know how you compete in terms of applicants versus Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, CSFB, UBS, and we can show that to you instantly. So by cohorts of students, by universities, by majors, by gender, by ethnicity, we can show companies how they stack up versus their competition. And that's something we could definitely charge for right now. So I think ultimately what I want to do is prove the, the market that actually we're, you know, companies need to be on our site to access students and, comp and users need to be there before we start trying to extract money from companies. But features like customization, we can definitely start charging for now. on how to go about building a complex website from like a time perspective, cost, was it outsourced, in-house? So uh, myself and my co-founder, my co-founder does most of the product-related stuff. I do most of the kind of business, marketing, sales-related stuff. Um, what we felt very strongly was that designing a product like this, as we realized in our first iteration of the site, which was a total failure, needs to be done in-house. So you, have, you can have total control of the user experience and the company experience from day one. So outsourcing is definitely a cheap alternative. We decided to raise more money, hire engineers full-time, hire a designer full-time, and have our product team completely in-house so that we could iterate changes very quickly. I can definitely see benefits to outsourcing, especially if your site is a less complex user experience. But for a site like ours, where you have, you know, there's so many sites competing for college kids' attention that to get them to actually use and engage with a platform like ours, you need to think through every single flow in the site. And I think it's very hard to do that if you're outsourcing and you're, you know, you're making calls with countries that are 12 hours different trying to, trying to iterate a, a product. So we started with putting all of our engineers in-house, and that's how we've grown. Uh, 
Uh, most of the viral growth that you've had, have you broken it down to see if it's mostly due to the, uh, a person importing his contact list and sending invites? Or is it coming from uh, clicking on links on wall posts that are sent back to Facebook? Have you measured? Actually, I think most of it is, is offline. Um, as soon as you, we, we're seeing that the number of users, like the average number of users that a new user has unidentified already is growing exponentially. So it used to be single digits for a while, then it jumped to 20, now it's like 50. And that's because there's a lot of word of mouth. As soon as you make like one placement at Princeton or at Brown or at, or at Harvard, it spreads offline in cafeterias and parties and wherever, and users just land on the site. Now, we're also hitting them you know, with flyers, and we're hosting parties, and we're putting stuff back into Facebook. So they're seeing it all sorts of ways. But I think the best kind of virality is still offline word of mouth virality. But in terms of what's actually the most effective way to sign someone up through Facebook, it's definitely a wall post to someone's actual wall. Because the average number of impressions of that wall post, most users don't realize this, is over 1,000 impressions. So any action you take on your Facebook wall is hitting 1,000 or depends on the number of unique individuals looking at it, but is getting a thousand impressions on Facebook. So it's very, very powerful what you can do by creating the right incentives for someone to put something on their Facebook wall. It's like free advertising on steroids. So, what, whatever you want, as long as you has the, as long as you have the user's approval, you can put whatever you want. Um, I mean, you want to create something that the user's not going to be embarrassed about or scared about, but actually wants to post on their wall. And if you keep prompting them to do things they don't want to do, they're eventually just going to get sick of it. So it's trying to find the most relevant things, especially questions and Q&A is a great one. If someone wants to know, hey, I, I'm trying to get a job at, you know, at uh, Deutsche Bank. Does anyone know anyone there? You can post that question on your wall and users can answer it. And just by posting that question, it draws users into the site because they have to come on to identify to answer that question. Sorry, what, what's that? Is there a dialogue between the hiring companies and the uh, and the uh, candidates? Uh, on on identified. Yes. Yeah, so you you, you mentioned the, the 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 friends talk to each other or the the candidates uh, interact. But so is there much interaction? It, vary, it varies by company. Some companies have used it very very extensively, and they're messaging like 20 candidates a day. Um, what you typically see is that you know identified is really just a sourcing tool. So there'll be a lot of exchange, hey, I like your resume, can you apply on my website? Or hey, can you email me at this address? Or hey, can you come to my information session offline? So the challenge we face is that we make the connection initially, and lots of companies are using it to make that connection. But then ultimately, the placement or the interview or the hire is happening offline, and we don't capture that. So what we're struggling with is how do we create the incentives for the company when they do hire someone, or for a candidate that does get hired, to put that information back into the site. This is the same problem that the dating sites have, is that they make a connection, but then no one ever bothers to say that a connection actually happened. We're trying to create the incentives because you have a recurring engagement here, right? Pfizer is going to be recruiting at Princeton this year and next year, and they want to actually put that information back onto their walls. So companies are using it very extensively to contact candidates as a sourcing tool, but we're not actually seeing or not controlling the entire interview process. So how did you get, uh, how did you build up the, the companies uh, on your platform to look at the, the users? So I, I understand the users is probably a viral thing like you mentioned. Yep. But to get the companies, which is the other side, how did you build that up? So uh, with companies, there's no, there's no Facebook to go get them, unfortunately. So it was just cold calling. We literally had to cold call companies. So what we did is we started where we thought it would be easiest. So we didn't start with McKinsey and Condé Nast and Disney where we know they already have huge recruiting programs, we went to startups. Because we knew startups have a huge pain point in recruiting. They want the best talent. They have no brand awareness, but they have no resources to go get it. Time, money, energy to go recruit on campus. So we signed up a bunch of really cool, interesting startups in Palo Alto that we knew would use the service and we knew would be attractive to students and use that to get the first students. And then once we had that, we created shadow profiles for a company like McKinsey let students start talking about McKinsey. And actually, we got inbound calls from a whole bunch of companies saying, what's this identified service that students are talking about me? We didn't give you permission to use our name on identified. 
And what I said is, I, I, don't, need your, I don't need your permission. Students are going to talk about you in the Q&A, whether you like it or not. Why don't you come on here, take control of your profile, and recruit? So that's how we signed up a lot of the bigger names, was as a branding tool as much as a recruiting tool. All right. Thank you very much, Brendan. Thanks, everyone.